lived in Samaria. And even though he lived in Samaria, he was considered a foreigner, an outcast. You, you see, what happened was, was that when the children of Israel rebelled and they were led into captivity, some of those people were left in Samaria. Some of the remnant were left in Samaria and the Babylonians brought in other people to live in Samaria and now they had intermarried and they were sort of a mixed breed. The Jews looked down on the Samaritans. If there was any possible way, if you came from northern Israel down to Jerusalem, the Jews would much rather walk 60 miles so they didn't have to go through Samaria. While in spite of the fact of where David lived, he still believed in God. And he knew that God could do great miracles. I mean, he had heard about how that God had opened up the Red Sea and the children of Israel crossed. He had heard about this little boy named David. Kind of, he thought, now this is kind of cool. But it was King David. But before he was king, he went out and he faced this huge giant with just a little slingshot and a rock and killed the giant. So David believed God. He was also kind. One of the things that David would do in his store was people would come in and go, Mr. David, uh, I, I need some groceries, but we don't get paid for another two weeks. David says, no problem. I trust you. When you have the money, come back and pay me. So that's what David would do. And that's what the people would do. He was always kind. And, you know, if people helped him out, maybe the, 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 sweet, the street sweeper came along and swept in front of his shop. And David said, thank you. Thank you so much. Not only was he kind, but he was thankful for what he had. He had a wife and he had some children. Man, they were the joy of his heart. He enjoyed being home with his family, but he enjoyed his business also as a shop owner. People would come in and go, Mr. David, he goes, say no more. He says, take what you need. I'll just write it on a piece of paper, I'll just put it in my records, and when you have the money, you can pay me. Thank you, Mr. David, thank you. Ah, uh, no problem. It is a pleasure doing work with you. And he knew that for the most part, most people would come back and pay him. Oh yeah, there was the odd occasion where somebody took advantage of him, but he let that be between him and God. He didn't let it bother him. If they didn't want to pay him, God still was going to bless him, and he still was thankful. Well, one day as he was working around the shop, he happened to look down at his hand, and there was this red spot with white all around it. The skin was white all the way around, and the red spot. Oh, he looked at it, and he thought, oh, it can't be. So he kind of just put it in his pocket for the time being, but he looked at it more and more and it wasn't going away. There was the red spot with the white around it. And he thought, I hope not. I hope not. I hope it's not the dun 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 dun, dun. the dreaded disease. So he knew what he had to do. He closed up his shop and he put on the front of the door closed. If he had the dun 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 the dreaded disease that meant that he had leprosy. And it also meant that he couldn't be around people. He couldn't be around his children. He couldn't give them a hug. He couldn't give his wife a kiss. But he had to go make sure. And so he walked down the road thinking, oh, what could I do? What could I do? He comes to the priest's house. You see, the priest 
was the one who really determined whether you had the dun 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 The Trinity So he knocked on the priest's door and the priest came on, David, good to see you! He says, sir, don't touch me. Well, what do you mean? The priest said, what do you mean? He goes, sir, take a look at this. He looked at his hand. He said, let me get a closer look there. And he goes and he gets his magnifying glass and he looks at David's hand, that red spot, that red sore with all, the white all around it. And he goes, David, I, I don't know how to say this. I, I don't know how to tell you this, but you have. David goes, don't say it. The priest said, but I got to David. I got to tell you this. You have the. Dun, da, dun, dun, dun. The disease. Oh, no. You have a leprosy. Oh, David thought, no. No, I've helped out so many good people. I've helped out whenever I could. And the priest says, David, you know what you need to do. Yeah. I got to go and live outside the city. And if anybody comes around, I have to yell out, unclean, stay away from me. So he goes home. He opens up the door and his kids come right in. Daddy, 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 good to see you. He says, don't touch, don't, don't, don't touch me. His wife comes around and goes, David, what's the matter? What's the matter, David? He goes, showed her the sore in her hand and he goes i have the dun 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 dun, dun the treaded disease <gasps> no no david you can are you sure he said i was at the priest and he told me i had leprosy dun 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 dun, dun. the treaded disease oh no I have to go. I have to go and live outside the city. And so she went to give him a hug. And he says, no, you can't give me a hug. You can't give me a kiss. I'm contagious. I'm unclean. So he goes and outside the city. And there were other people. There were nine other people who had leprosy. They all kind of joined together because they were the outcasts. When anybody ever walked by, they would have to yell out, Unclean! Stay away from me! I have leprosy! The kids would come by and go, Oh! That's disgusting! Oh! They have leprosy! Oh! Run away! Get away from them! Oh! young girls would walk by and, and, and David would think man I'd love to give my kids a hug and they go ah oh gross they have leprosy stay away from them ew he has leprosy stay away well whenever anybody would walk by they would pick up stones and throw them at the lepers and the lepers would try and cower but they always had to say Stay away from me. I'm unclean. Well, David thought, you know what we should do? We should at least be happy. And the other said, be happy? What do you mean be happy? Well, at least we're alive. We have each other. We haven't died yet. Our fingers haven't fallen off. My nose hasn't fallen off. We should be thankful. So David had this idea. He goes, you know what? The next time anybody comes, instead of yelling, unclean, stay away from me, let's sing a song. The other said, are you crazy? Seriously? They're all sitting there pouting, thinking how terrible it was to have leprosy. And here comes some of the kids and they go, oh, that's disgusting. Oh, they have leprosy. That's, oh, that's disgusting. disgusting. Ew. And David goes, <clears throat> Stay away from me. I have leprosy. And the kids go, <laughs> but they were smiling. So David sang it again. Stay away from me. 
I got leprosy. And the kids, they moved on. And they were smiling. The next group of uh, people came along and David got a bit more proud. As they were getting close, the other lepers were ready to yell out, stay away from us, we have leprosy. And David goes, stay away from me. I have leprosy. And instead of the people picking up stones and throwing it at him, they kind of smiled and they waved. Well, David said, come on, guys. Let's, 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 let's join a choir. Come on, look at they're smiling at us. They're not throwing the stones at us. Let's be happy anyways. We have each other. And more people came walking by. So two or three of the others at Leper stood up there and they're mm, Stay away from me. I have leprosy. Stay away. And, and the people said, Thank you. And they didn't pick up the stones. Well, David saw his wife and his children coming and, and he wanted to run and he wanted to give them a hug, but he couldn't do it. And they brought a basket and they set it down close to him. They said, David, we brought you some food. We brought you some fruit. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, listen to this. Come on, guys. Come on. I need your help. Oh, okay. What are we going to do? We're going to sing. And so when his wife and his kids were there, David goes, mm -hmm. Stay away from me. I have leprosy. And the other men started to join in. Stay away from me. I have leprosy. The guy who sang really, really high tenor, he goes, Stay away from me. I have leprosy. The big guy who sang bass goes, Stay away from me. I have leprosy. And they all started to harmonize. Well, the people were smiling. And David's wife says, David, David, I'll bring you some more fruit. I'll bring you some more vegetables. I'll, I'll bring you something. Thank you. I'd love to give you a hug. Give a hug to my kids. Guys, one more time. They all tuned up. Mm -hmm. Stay away from me. I have leprosy. Stay away from me. I have leprosy. And the people were smiling. Well, one day, this man and a, a group of his followers walking down the road. And of course, they had to let everybody know that they had leprosy, that they were unclean. And so David stood up and he was we just ready to shout out, hey, I'm unclean. But he began to sing, stay away from me. I have leprosy. Stay away from me. And the man get closer. David thought, maybe, maybe he didn't hear me. Maybe he didn't realize that the, the ten of us have leprosy. So he sang a little bit louder. Stay away from me. I have leprosy. He says, come on, guys. We need some help because the man is coming closer. Stay away from me. I have leprosy. And as the, the man was coming closer, David wanted to scream. Don't come any closer, please. I have the dun, 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 the dreaded disease. But he kept walking. And so they sang a little bit louder. Stay away from me. I have leprosy. But it didn't matter. He was coming closer. And then David heard who it was. It was Jesus of Nazareth. You see, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, but instead of walking the 60 miles all the way around Samaria, he was cutting right through there, and, and here when Jesus was coming. And, and David thought, oh, I want just so much for somebody to touch me. I want so much for somebody just to shake my hand or hug me. But he's coming closer, and he cries out, stay away from me. Stay! And he tried to sing, but his voice was breaking. Stay away from me! I have leprosy! And Jesus kept walking closer and closer and closer. And, and finally, David says, 
I'm unclean. I have leprosy. And Jesus said, what would you like for me to do for you? He says, I want to be touched. I want to be whole. I want to be able to hug my kids again. I want to be able to hug my wife again, but I have leprosy. And Jesus took a step forward. And he reached out his hand and he says, I will touch you. And the other men gathered around. And they said, Jesus, will you touch me also? And Jesus said, yes, I will. And he began to touch each one of them. And he said, look, look. And they looked at where their leprosy was and the skin was all pure. One man says, Part of the custom was they had to go show themselves to the pure, to the priest, and he would determine whether the leprosy was gone. Another one of the men, the one that sang really, really high, goes, "Ha! My leprosy is gone." The other one goes, "Ha! ha, ha yeah, my leprosy is gone." All of them looked at each other. The leprosy on their skin was gone. The leprosy on their face was gone. The leprosy on their hands was gone. Jesus had made them completely whole. Well, they were in such a hurry. They jumped up and they started to run as fast as they could to get to the priest because as soon as the priest said that they were clean, they could come back into society. They weren't quarantined anymore. As David began to run, he thought, I didn't even say thank you. I didn't even express my gratitude. Man, I was so consumed with myself. So he turned around and he ran back and, and he fell down because Jesus hadn't moved. He was still standing right there where he touched him. And he fell down and he says, oh, Jesus, thank you, thank you. And Jesus says, weren't there 10 lepers? Yeah, yeah, we all have leprosy out here. Well, where's the other nine? David goes, they were in such a hurry, they just ran off to the priest. And Jesus said, and you, David? Y you, a foreigner, a stranger, people who are, are, say that you're an outcast, you're the only one that came back to say thank you. He says, go and be whole. Go back to your family. Hug your kids and thank you. Thank you for coming back and giving me praise. Thank you for coming back and saying thank you to me. David was so excited. He ran back to his house and he came running into this house and his kids come, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy! And they stop. Oh, oh. Daddy says, David says, it's okay. Jesus made me all better. I don't have the do, 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 do. I don't have the dreaded disease anymore. I'm all better. And his wife comes around the corner. She goes, David! He says, come here. Jesus. Jesus made me whole. Jesus took away all the leprosy. The other guys, they all, they're all whole also. But they ran so fast to the priest. But I turned to Jesus and then said, thank you. Man. You know, when God blesses us, we should say, thank you. When God pours his goodness on us, we should say, thank, thank you. You would say, what has God done for us? Today, he's given you this day. Today, you are still breathing. You could say, Thank you, God, for the breath. God has given you eyes so that you can see the green grass and the blue sky. You need to say thank you to God for that. God has blessed you where you ate food today. Maybe it was just a bowl of cereal or maybe it was a big steak dinner. You need to say thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your provisions. God loves to hear us give him praise. God loves to hear us say, thank you. God loves to see that our heart is filled with gratitude and thankfulness. So no matter what you're going through, good or bad, 
God is still in control and we can say thank you. Maybe even when things look really difficult, you'll choose a song and you can say, Thank you, God, for being with me today. Thank you, God, for blessing me today. In spite of what I go through, you are still in control and I thank you for being so good to me. Who knows? Maybe God will put a new song in your heart, a song of thanksgiving, a song of praise. David sang, stay away from me, I have leprosy. And when our heart is filled with thanksgiving, and when our heart is filled with praise, we can look up into the heavens, and no matter what's happening, we can say, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise.